All right, zooming in and out. Welcome back, guys. Today I'm going to be working on a portrait I found online of a woman. I really like the lighting on this image. And I'm going to jump right in. Uh, right off the bat here, I make a mistake. Because my reference on the tablet is not the same size as my piece of paper, I'm drawing it larger. Um, I have to use a relative measuring system. So right here I put in what I want the height to be, which is not the same as what I see for the reference. Which means that I should have an estimate of where the width of the head is, but for whatever reason, right away here, I make a pretty big mistake. That's the width of the head. I should use it to measure against the height, but instead I just transfer it right over. I move the line to fit it into the piece of paper and I transfer that width literally over using my bicycle spoke because it's straight and it's, uh, it's easy to grip, a nice way to move uh, measurements. So here you go. With that mistake, I right off the bat have a mistake. The width is too narrow and that's fine. It's kind of a, um, this happens and so now I've got to use it and so I'm going to go around the edges of the face, try to find where the middle of her face is, and that, that dot is I, the highlight of her cheek. Um, it's an estimate. All of this is an estimate. Everything I'm putting down in my mind is uh, elastic and flexible and it can move. I'm putting a tick where I think the eyebrow juts out on the left side to the farthest point. Um, eye goes down, cheek comes out. I'm trying to figure out the angle of the left side of her uh, jaw, face, down to the chin, up the right side, the ear, back of the head, front of the neck, estimates. These are all estimates. I'm drawing with a an H. I usually do my block-ins in a 2H and an H because it uh, gives me light lines that I can easily erase easily move around, it doesn't stain the paper, it doesn't damage the paper. The way I sharpen my paper and pencil keeps me from pressing too hard. I'm trying to figure out the structure on the left side of the face, see if it feels right to me so I can have something that right, right off the bat feels good. Um, and drawing is kind of a mix of logic and uh, sensation. So having a process of measurement of where things go will give you a method to have a precise drawing. But it still comes down to a feeling. Does this, this feel right? Because you can develop really highly tuned senses when you, when you put the time in. So now I'm using a um, vertical horizontal lines at 0 and 90 degrees to try to figure out where things go. And there it is. I just realized that the head was too uh, narrow, so I moved over that width. And, I, and I'm kind of shocked by my mistake at this point in the video. So I'm going to double check it. The width of the head, whoops, I moved it, so I'll try to move it back. But the width of her head is going to be from the bottom of the chin up to about that hairline, that widow peak area. So, wow, yeah, that back of the head really comes out um, um, over an inch, which is a huge mistake for portraiture, but so be it. Uh, I'm going to continue on with my drawing. It makes sense because now I have more room for the sideburns, uh, which will come down near the jaw, the jaw, back of the jaw, turns into a fairly round ear, uh, which I'm still going to try and draw with uh, straight lines. Where does the top go? So I'm going to use that tick mark and use a zero degree horizontal line to figure out how high up it, that ear comes. And I feel like that's where the ear comes and that line went through the top of the eye. 
And that's my new landmark. That new tick is where the eyebrow turns into the skull. So I continue on with the ear. And now I'm going to erase my initial block in before I measure the width. Because the left side of the face feels good, now the right side needs to be fixed to go out to the actual width. It's cleaning up the lines. Sharpen my pencil. Sharp lines make sharp drawings, kids. You hear me say it all the time. It really allows me to put more precise lines down. A dull pencil has less accuracy. Uh, back of the hair. Um, sweeping up, sweeping down. It's like I moved the top of the head a little bit more. Uh, you'll often hear me say in class that hair and clothing isn't as important um, in comparison to the underlying form, skeleton, or figure. Uh, but I still want to get a really good estimate of where the hair is so that I can use it as a measuring point for other things, like where the shoulders go, where her clavicles go, where the neck um, turns form into the torso. Still using zero-degree horizontal lines to try to line things up. I really want, at this point, my ear to feel well and be the right measurements because I'm going to use it to help me figure out where the nose goes. And once I get the nose, um, I want that crosshair. All right, so again, there's the bottom of the hair. The hair isn't as important. However, I do want to use it as a landmark for my drawing so I have an idea of how long her neck is. See, I used an angle there to try to figure it out, but really what I want to try to do is use up and down, left and right, horizontal, vertical, landmarks. What's the distance? So making sure that I figure out where that shoulder is. The distance from the right, left shoulder to under the chin is about the same size as the ear. So now I go to my drawing and I measure that ear, and I bring that drawing down from the bottom of the chin, and then I'll mark on my paper so that's a relative measuring system. It's not um, objective, it's not absolute. Absolute would be if I had the same size drawing as I do my reference. And I don't. Everything here is making it larger. So I'll, right off the bat, I'm challenging myself. Don't, I wouldn't recommend doing this. In the beginning, I wouldn't, I would make sure that my reference is the same size as my drawing. So everything is more. Um, objective, absolute. So you don't have to use this relative measure, measuring system. Drawing for accuracy is difficult enough without having to put the pressure of, of, of changing scale, changing size as you do it in the beginning. Um, but I want it to, but I want to show you how to do it in case it, you don't want to use a grid system. You use a relative system. Find something on your drawing that's the same size as as what you're measuring, and you can move that over pretty well. All right, lining up things. Where's the center of that chin? Where's the lowest point of that chin? The lowest point is that little tick that I put going straight down. Where the cheek turns around across the edge of the mouth into the chin, there is a dip on the left side of her face. That dip will also be a shadow under the lip for the shadow shape. So I want to I put that in there. The shadow under the jaw is not a line. The shadow shape is a very narrow polygon and 
It's important to realize that what we're drawing isn't to capture lines, it's to capture forms and shapes. And I really actually struggled a lot with that, that, that cheek. Um, and I think the reason is, is that I don't really know how far down that eye socket comes under her left eye. But I do know that the bottom of the nose lines up with the bottom of her ear. And if I look at the shadow shape from the tip of her nose, which almost touches the left side of her face, um, there's a lot shadow line that goes and encompasses her nostrils. And that's a triangle. Almost looks like an anime in the nose right now. And now I know where the nose is. I feel pretty comfortable with that, scale-wise. And I'm currently looking at the lines of symmetry on the face. That the hairline is uh, almost parallel with the eyebrows that are parallel with the tops and bottoms of her eye. Parallel again with uh, the part of her nose between the nostrils, top of her lips. And then the actual lips, because they jut out around the form, they're not parallel. Because I can't see the actual left side of her lips. I had can only, the landmark I used was where the two lips touch on the left side. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now is, is that crosshair that I'm always talking about. On the face, you want to see a crosshair going down the center of the face and across the center of the eyes. And because this one is, she's looking up, and it's um, she's looking pretty far to the left. I'm trying to get that ear, the eye in. And there's my angle, but rather than do draw the angle, I'm going to try and figure out uh, the distance and triangulate. So from the corner of the eye down to where I think the skull and the eye socket and cheek meet on the left hand side. That was the that's the hypotenuse of how I measured it. You go over from left to right and then up a certain amount, and then I transfer the angle. And I have more angles that I can double check. It feels pretty good to me. It doesn't feel really off at this point. I'm realizing again that maybe that, um, I, that bottom of her eye comes down a bit more. So I marked it. And there's my sweeping line, my first sweeping line. And I know that everything's going to be parallel to that. It took me a while to find that line. Now there's the line under the nose between the nostrils, the edges of the nose. There's that little dip that leads into the top of the lip. The top of the lip is parallel, and here it is. The mouth is not parallel. It's actually at a slight angle because I can't see the other side of the mouth. If I could see the other corner of her mouth, it would still be parallel. At least with this uh, portrait. The one with Ben, the camera was really close to him, so the... The lines are a little bit more um, exaggerated, like a fish eye. All right, I just zoomed in a bit more to my drawing. This is a different setup. Uh, I had taken a quick break because I was feeling like the eye was very off, the right eye. Um, so I took a break because logically and according to my measurements, it was in the right place, but it feels really off to me at this point. So now I'm trying to measure and make sure I get that eye in the right place. Is it even, is it in the right place? So I'm, where's the middle of the head compared to the edge of the eye? And I believe that mark there I put down was the middle of the face. Sometimes the measurements and the tick marks I put down are about structure 
or supporting my method more than it is the actual drawing. Right? And that's what that last line I put down is. Right? Parallel line, zero degree line going from the edge of the nose all the way to the edge of the face and it runs under the nose. Cheek looks like it's fine. Following the ear around. Um, moving my eyes around, I'm going to fill in a little bit more of the of the head and the hair. Uh, the lines look darker, but they're not. They're just overlapping, so they get darker. So the top of the head to that eyebrow tick, if I double that line down, it shows up on the reference about where I marked the last thing. And now I'm trying to make sure that that mark there is, the, is correct. And I'm measuring where the eyebrow is. Is the eyebrow in the right place? And it looks like it is. Um, I was double checking everything because I wanted to fix what I had before I put more down. Strong foundation, right? Uh, weak foundation, weak drawings. So that line parallel there is correct right off the edge of the top of the eyebrows. Uh, now I'm trying to sculpt the eye. There is the lines above the eye for the upper eyelid. Tear ducts to the edge of the um, iris and pupil create little triangles. Uh, there's a dark shadow line. Tips of the eyes because the light is still coming from a bit above. She has dark eyes and the shadows from the thickness of the eyelids. And they're parallel, so the distance is what I put down. And while I'm over here, let's put in the eye light, eyebrow. And measuring things, it looks like it fits about there. If I mix it with the landmark, the edge of the nostril, or the, and it comes down around to the edge of the eye. And a little bit more sculpting. The hairline actually goes back. And slowly filling in details. The top of the lip looks like it's actually a little higher. And now I'm going to fill in her lips. They're slightly open, kind of pouty. Uh, Got to make sure I don't exaggerate, over exaggerate it, or it turns cartoony really quick. And that's not my goal with this drawing, it's to be literal. the bottom of the lip comes down a little bit more and each mark I put down I'm very conscious of and now I'm going to clean it up and erase what uh, is what isn't useful anymore either to the drawing or to me for measuring in the drawing and that includes that line under the nose that'll become more refined Kind of like scaffolding on a building. Um, a lot of my lines may move or just not be there in the final drawing. And now I'm trying to outline that polygon shape of the shadow. Um, there's the shadow under the lip, the edge of the face. The shadow comes up around, um, juts out from the left top corner of her lip to under the nose. Make sure I have it in the right place. Um, there's that little heart shape where the dip hits the top of the lip. It's important not to over-exaggerate that too. Catches a lot of light, therefore creating contrast. And it can seem like it's very curved, but it's actually very flat. This was a difficult drawing to do, and I really spent a lot of time double and triple checking what I put down before I moved on. Uh, by now I've done enough portraits to know that the first lines I put down are going to be wrong.
and I can use them to help me figure out. And I remember right now as I put in the right corner of that mouth and I fixed that lip that it finally felt like there was form in the face. It finally, it was finally popping out as this is a, this, this is a decent drawing. Um, in class, I tell you often that I, I don't like my drawings halfway through, and I didn't like it until this point. So this, to me, is the point where I feel I finally, I'm finally, finally hit the green lights, and things are going my way in the drawing. And it doesn't mean I'm going to let my guard down. It just means that um, the work I've put into is paying off, and my confidence goes up, and so now I can easily move more lines in there. I'm starting to move things. The whole, uh, the skull, the eye socket just came down. I'm getting that eye in better. The, the nose, her nose is not straight. There's a little, little bump in it. It actually goes further to the left. I'll move it again. And I slow down here to a race. My lines keep them clean. And uh, there's another area I really struggle with. And looking at the drawing now, it looks like it's uh, good. The bottom where that jowl, bottom of her cheek hits the jowl, edge of the mouth, turns form into the chin. That really has, um, it gave me, another, it was another area that I really struggled with. And I'll end up moving it. And I don't know why I did. But here it looks fine. And I think at the final drawing it looks fine. Um, but you got to trust the measurements. Sometimes more than the feeling. Sometimes you trust the feeling more than the logic. Um, with portraits, to really get a likeness, it's a... Uh, for me, I find it's a very delicate balance of feeling and logic. And in the beginning, that may not make a lot of sense. So really trust, double check, triple check, and trust your landmarks, your measurements. And that area really feels strong to me, and I really like it. I tend to, in the past, overwork an area that I like. Like, I want to, like, I really want to ride that perfect wave. So I, if you keep overworking an area, you can destroy it, and it's not there anymore. So really, you want to, uh, if you find an area you like, just walk away from it for a while and try to get other areas up to that level. Sometimes that just means that every area in your drawing needs to have that same amount of... Um, detail or TLC into it. Right, highlight in the eye, round out the pupil, darken the shadow shape under the eye and add the pupil, sorry, or the highlight in the iris and then shadow shape under the eye and into the pupil. They are squares, eventually I'll round it, but again, trying to keep shapes and lines straight to help me figure out the forms. Uh, the neck, another thing I didn't like. Uh, it moved around a lot. But at some point, whether it's right or wrong, you need to have clean lines. You can make a better judgment of whether it needs to move or not. And even if it needs to move after you've really drawn it well, it's not so hard if you move it first and then erase it, which I'll end up doing with that left shoulder eventually. Up here in the ear I'm adding little details and shadow shapes. Uh, there's a shadow um, underneath the where the eye meet and the tear duct inside of the socket kind of curves around up and under. There is a shadow and a highlight that meets side by side that rides down the ridge of the nose. Um, I added a little bit of a a sharp edge at the tip of her nose for the highlight and then the shadow shape back down to the corner near the nostril and I'm following the shadow shapes now. Um, little shape, it's kinda looks like a mini Florida 
the state of Florida for the nostril. And I remember thinking this may not be in the right place, but at least I'll get it in. Uh, looking closely in that drawing, you'll see it on the reference. I'm including it on the website. Uh, I, when I draw the, the pupils, I'm looking at the size and the relationship of the triangles. They're actually kind of looks like arrows or mouse cursor arrows of the white to the pupils. The one on the left is not a circle because it's on the edge of an orb, edge of a circle. Um, kind of like the satellite on the Death Star as it turns around, so it's more of an oval. Shadow shapes, as well as structure down to the neck. There's, she has a lot of muscle in there, but if I draw everything I see, it will look very weird and abstract. I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to stylize it, and I, li I put these two lines in there um, just to kind of outline where I think you know, the edge of the drawing will be uh, compositionally. And I move the shadow shape over, cleaning up lines. And now I'm embracing all, many of the lines. So from where the drawing turned a while back at the corner, the right corner of her mouth, and my confidence started growing and I started cleaning up all my lines, I'm finally getting to a point where I like all of the features that I've put in and I'm erasing the landmarks. All the parallel lines disappear. All of the supporting scaffolding in the drawing is being taken down. And now I'm looking into each shape and blocking them in. In class we do exercises about blocking in multiple objects and that pays off here uh, so that you have an idea of how to simply include and more accurately place features like eyes to the nose, to the cheek, to the mouth. And then eventually, from multiple objects, you come down into the individual objects. Uh, where is that eyebrow now that I'm in that area? And I'm not moving where they are, but I am now cleaning up and stylizing elements. Her eyebrows are darker, so I'll put them in. Erasing the, the helper lines and trying to figure out where the edge of the eye is and then where the lid tucks into it. And you'll see it on the reference. It's hard to see here in the video. There are lines that define all that, but they're hidden in the shadows. And the reason why I want to include them is because when we do portraits, everyone goes to the eyes. Uh, eyes are the windows of the soul. And so that's what we look at. So we really want to make sure that the lines are most accurate around, around the eyes. And by now it's no longer lines. It really is the form. The lips feel full to me. They feel round. They feel like they have, um, they, they wrap on a, a, the roundness of her lower face. And I'm drawing in the contour, curved lines, uh, the dip that really swings out on her. And uh, the nostril was not in a bad place after all, so now I'm outlining the shape. I'm leaving the dark in there. Um, I'm putting in the nostril. Nostril is not done yet, but at least it's a clean line.
this area of the drawing and this this um this much time into the drawing can be one of the most satisfying i spent so much time relatively um setting up i'm going to just call it scaffolding the scaffolding for the face the structure of the face getting in the landmarks and then actual features eyes nose mouth that now I'm, this is the fun place. This is like after you bake the cake and you get to put on the icing. This is, this is the, um, this is the really fun stuff where I get to take my time and her personality comes out. If you've done the portrait right, if you, even if you don't, even if you don't feel like you're very strong at portraiture, which only comes with practice, I've drawn hundreds of faces by now. And they could always be better, they could always be worse, but the subtlety of the expression, there's a lot of expressions in the corner of the mouth, a lot of expressions in the eyes, the relationship of the eyes and the shadows to the eyebrow. So here I'm realizing that the chin is really big on my drawing. Something needs to change and I'm not sure what. Really, I think looking at it in retrospect as I'm narrating over all this, the shadow shape under the lip could have come down further. But I end up bringing the chin up instead about two millimeters, which is pretty big. Normally when you move something that much, you, um, you have to move the features too. This is what perfectionism looks like, because I can see it looks like a good portrait, but I'm really just obsessing over making everything perfect. And of course, there is no perfect. It's just an idea in your head. So rather than try to beat myself up about it, I'm really just trying to enjoy this, this final stages of the drawing. This drawing that, these drawings that I'm creating for you guys, can be transferred to canvas. They can be printed out at a larger scale. You can paint right on top of them with acrylic paint. I've done that a lot too. Okay, because the chin has moved, now the neck is way too long. So again, relational. The distance from the chin, or the length of that neck, is how long? From the corner of the mouth, just to below. And the neck needs to move up. So if the chin moves up, everything else needs to move up. And it's almost double the distance that the chin moved up. If the chin moved up two or three, then that looks like it's moved up almost, well, almost tenths, you know, a full centimeter. Yeah, I can see now that the chin is not accurate. I made an error in it. At some point, that reference won't be there anymore, and the only one who would really judge if it was an accurate portrait would be this woman or people who know her. Uh, while you're learning, it's not a bad thing to try to really get, get accurate. If portraiture is your thing, and uh, for most of you, it's not in... But knowing these skills will, I think, help you out with a lot of other things in life. But um, if, if you really like portraiture, and you end up doing portraits of people you know, you, you know, the, the portraits are in their house or in their loved one's house, someone who knows them. And if the portrait's wrong, then they're not going to put it up as proudly as it. So... 
Portraiture is very difficult. I said it before, it's like a jigsaw puzzle where you are designing each piece as you put it in. Still working on that chin, and I see that it needs to come out a bit more. So now I'm bringing it out about half a millimeter, a millimeter. And now I'm starting to shade in the shadow shape. Technically I'm done with the drawing. And I'm just doing a very loose, very light shading. Just to define the dark and the light areas. I don't want to put in a whole lot of shading because um, some teachers, some realist teachers might disagree, but I find that forms become even more um, obvious to me about placement and size and scale once I put in a quick shading, which is what I've done. Some eyelashes. Not pressing very hard at all. Those will erase or smear very, very easily. I do smudge, I mean, I do um, uh, do a fixative over my drawings if I don't paint on them. If I paint, I'll just paint right on top. Her whole upper lip is in the shadow, and she's wearing a very dark uh, shade of lipstick. But shade value aside, there is a dark and a light in that lip, so I'm just only uh, quickly shading the darkest areas of the upper lip. <laughs> 